Hello and welcome to another episode of the Theatre Professor Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jakimak II and I am the Theatre Professor. And this week we're going to be looking at Autodesk's Sketchbook Pro for the desktop. Indeed, we are moving away from ArtRage for a little bit because I feel like, hey, let's try something new. I like new things. It's a new year. It's a new semester. It's all new. Jazz hands. Now, Sketchbook Pro is a little different than ArtRage in that ArtRage really does attempt to mimic natural media. Sketchbook does not. Sketchbook is more in the same realm as Photoshop in that it really is a digital painting application. Now, it does have some things called paintbrushes in there, but you'll see that they're very different than what we have gotten used to in ArtRage. Also, the cost of Sketchbook is pretty amazing. It has both a subscription-based as well as a purchase for perpu, 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 perpetuity. Ah, I got the word. Purchase for perpetuity, meaning you get to keep it forever, um, but at different prices. The subscription is only $25 a year. Yes, I said that right, $25 a year. You can buy lots of coffees in a year for $25. I also want to introduce my new camera intern. It's an unpaid internship. This is uh, uh, my wife, actually. She's behind the camera now. And she will be filming a lot of these tutorial segments because she loves me very much. I'm also paying her in zero dollars, which is good, I suppose, for an internship. Because some internships, you have to pay them. Mm hmm. If you haven't done so already and you're interested, the Art Rage for the Desktop 101 and Art Rage for the iPad 101 classes begin on Monday, January 12th. So if you haven't done so, sign up. You can go to www.thetheaterprofessor.com slash classes. Slash. So sit back, grab your tablet, whether it's the Intuos Pro or the Bamboo or the huge Cintiq. And if you've got a Cintiq, I will admit right now I am jealous of you because the Cintiqs are gorgeous and way over my budget. And get ready for another tutorial here on The Theater Professor. Thanks. All right, so here we are in Autodesk Sketchbook. And you'll see that if you use the iPad app, there are some similarities between the iPad app and the desktop version, but you'll see obviously the desktop version is going to be more robust. It's going to have more abilities. So let's take what we're going to do today is it's going to be a quick perusal. This is going to be another series again going through a variety of things, but for today I just want to do a quick rundown of what we're going to be looking at, get a feeling and a sense for the UI, the user interface, and be prepared as we move into the next couple of weeks how to use this and how to use it quickly. Okay, first off up top, you have your usual menu bars. You've got your file set. And this is interesting. You can do flip books in this. If you remember like when you were a kid and you would have a notebook and you'd draw a bunch of images in the notebook that would change positions as they go and then you flip through it. Well, you can do that in here. Uh, not much other things are, not many other things are, are you know, any more different than most other programs here. You've got edit. We do have a stylus responsiveness here. And if you click it, you can adjust your stylus. I'm, again, I'm using the Wacom Intuos Pro. Under image, you can change the sizes, crops, mirror, that kind of thing. You can bring up some other windows, such as our layer editor, which I am gonna bring that up because I like having that available. You have your color editor. I'll bring it up for now, but more than likely that won't stay up. And we have our Copic library. Now, for those that you don't know what the Copic is, it's a type of marker that uh, a lot of illustrators like to use. And in my field, in costume design, it's or in, in theater, costume designers, I've, I've met a lot that like to use it for creating their costume designs. So I'll leave that up for right now. Uh, eventually, we'll close a bunch of these. And you've got the default layout. So if I click it, it renders us back to the default layout. I'm going to open up those three that I just had open just so they're there so we can see them okay under my account now if you have the subscription you will be signed in I'm currently signed in and you can click sign out you can manage your account online 
You can buy a sketchbook. I already have it. And then, of course, there's the help. And in fact, there was an update today, and so I had to. Uh, I did indeed have to update. And I'm actually starting this a little later than I initially anticipated. Across the left-hand side here, you'll see that this is our brush palette, and it can be actually increased. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Look at me. I'm already breaking stuff. It can indeed be increased to show more uh, of what is available here. Um, a lot of these are markers. Wow, I'm saying I'm a lot today. I got to get out of that habit. That's obnoxious. Up top here, you see the double slider. This shows the brush properties. Let's close that. And the second one, lots of different brushes here. And we'll go through all those later on. This is just, again, this is quick. Show you what this is. All right. Close that. Up here you have what are called pucks, and they change different things. So the first one, uh, you, well, I can't change the opacity of this brush. Let me grab like a, uh, a marker. There we go. Is f I can't change the opacity of that brush either. Eventually I'll find a brush that I can change the opacity of, and it'll be like, oh, okay, here. Oh, Okay, so one of the things you can do is you can change the size. Let me bring my puck down here. So moving left and right, I'm changing the size of my brush. Now I cannot change the opacity of this one. Let's see if I can get a synthetic soft brush. Here we go. Here we go. Now you can really see the size, shape, and take take uh, take shape. And we can just. And I can also change the opacity. Up and down is opacity. Left and right is your size. Okay. Your other puck up here is your luminance up and down and your saturation. I don't have an actual color. Let me pick a color. There we go. And your saturation. So you'll see this is saturation at 30% of this blue versus 100%. This is luminance all the way at 100%, and then at zero, and right at 50 is where the color is. At zero, you're at black. At 100, you're at white. So you can do something. So this is a less saturated color and a with a higher luminance, and you can see it right there. And then we can take and switch our luminance to a lower luminance and then change our saturation to a lesser saturated color. So using these pucks, you can very quickly move about colors. And again, you can adjust the opacity as well. OK. And your size. This one doesn't doesn't like to be reset. It keeps resetting. So I don't know if that's a glitch in the program or if it's just my, uh, there's my saturation. Yeah, it keeps resetting and I don't know why. Uh, probably something I can play with later on. Oh, here's a big brush. Look at that. All right. So those are our pucks. Oops. Let's, let's move our pucks back up here. There we go. Okay. Across the top, you have another menu bar. One of them is undo, redo. We all know how to use that. You have the ability to magnify. You can move, zoom in, zoom out. Now, there are a couple of shortcut keys, and I'm not going to get into those yet. But we will uh, discover how to use those later on as well. And do those. OK. You have right here is a select tool. And you can see all the things you can do with selecting. So for example, let's do, this is a magic wand here. And I just selected all of that color there. And the tolerance is right here. So we'll go much more in depth into that later on. You have a crop tool, a quick transform 
transform a flood fill layer text. A ruler, which is nice. Let me switch to pencil. And you can see you can very easily do straight lines. Okay. You have an ellipse, which, I mean, I don't need to tell you what it does. It creates ellipses. You, of course, have a French ruler. There we go. And you can actually change to different ones. Let me clear all this out. And this is the one I really like right here. This is the perspective tool. And I need to, there we go. Which allows you to draw on perspective. And if we zoom out here, hold on one second, come back over here to our pencil tool, turn on our perspective again, you'll see there's two points here. So you can actually change your perspective as well. See how it goes through that point and goes through that point. So you have the ability to actually change your perspective depending on what you want to create. Okay. It also has single point, triple point, and spherical perspective. And the spherical perspective is really quite intriguing. Let me um, let me clear this real quick. And we'll turn on our spherical perspective. And it's almost like fisheye, right? And can, I mean, you can, you can see where the possibilities on this could be endless. You can have a lot of fun with this. There's a couple you can go through the middle, and then you're, you know, you're doing some really cool patterns there. You can snap or unsnap. You can lock your vanishing points, etc. And then, of course, there is the mirror tool. So not only could you do this, but you could also mirror yourself. And now I'm mirroring four ways. Okay. Um, so there's that. I'm going to turn that off. Turn off our perspective. Clear again. Here we have our steady stroke. Oh, I need to turn off my mirrors. I thought I did. There we go. Mirrors are off. Again, clear this. So what our steady stroke does... So let's turn it on so we can look at it. Right now we're at 40. If we took it to zero, see how my line goes wavy? If we took it up to 177... you can essentially it gives you a leader creating a nice smooth now it was on 40 which is not much of a lead you can see it right there but look how smooth I can get my circles we'll turn that off then of course you have shapes You've got layers, your brush palette. You can turn your palettes on and off this way. So there we go. On the right-hand side, like I said, we have our layers. And one of the unique things that uh, Sketchbook does is you can see here, I'm holding down with my stylus on my tablet. And then it allows me to pick from a variety of things in a circle here. You see that? So it's a little different. You don't have to right-click. You just hold down and then move it about. And the same can be said true in this down left section over here. So for example, if I hover over the brushes, you can see here there's a quick choice of several brushes. Or if I hover over the edit, you can very quickly choose edit items. Same thing here. You see that? So that is 
something that takes a little time to get used to. You know, it's not something that when I was doing this, I, it, it doesn't come naturally very quickly to me. It's something that takes a little bit of time. But once you've figured it out, once you have it down, it is it's very easy to work with. Sorry, I just wanted to. Okay, good. Got my airbrush going right now. So layers, just like any other layer, you know, you've got clear, you've got uh, you've got Twitter comments coming to me, <laughs> you've got ad groups, new layers, and then of course you have all of the different layer settings, the blend modes, things like that, your opacity. So it's very much like any other image or art program out there. And then again, down at the bottom right, you have some you can very quickly turn things on and off. You have some undos here, and then you can very quickly pick things. So it's a, a almost like a speed bar down there. All right, we've now looked at the UI. It's a very simple overlook. You now have an idea of what we're gonna be looking at over the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned. Each Friday, probably for the next month or two, we'll be talking about Autodesk Sketchbook. So if you haven't done so already, check it out online. Grab a copy of it. Again, it's only $25 for the entire year. You can't go wrong with that. Grab a copy and let's uh, let's learn it. Uh, I, I have... Oh, and now I'm getting emails. I have some knowledge of it, but it's something that I'm actually going to be learning a little bit with you as you... Uh, learn how to use it. I have used it most recently in, and if you've seen the designs for it on thetheaterprofessor.com uh, for Adam's family. And I did my pencil outlines in this program using the perspectives tool. It was really fun, really enjoyed it. And so it, I, I think it's, I think it's a strong program, but I do want to learn it a little more and uh, you can come along on the ride with me. That's it for this week. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the Theatre Professor. <laughs>